and I feel like leaving open Wukong just always feels like it is a mistake right now. But V5 going to be the team to go towards the Ezreal this time around, and going to instantly pick up the Viego with the Wukong gone. Now for Clid, you would expect maybe some something like the Lee Sin. I didn't even have time to finish up. The man just insta-locked it. And about. Care on his signature but pick once again. This is what we're talking about. This is what we wanted. This is what we've been asking for. Aggression, proactivity, good laders. The Lissandra comes up through this time, but it feels like, like, look at the difference between what FX have now versus what they had in game number one. This feels infinitely better. Oh, I agree, right? Again, just ha being able to connect through your mid jungle where we've highlighted FX have looked a lot better. But for V5, uh, not going to be an easy task getting over their mid jungle, right? Lissandra winning out in that 1v1 against the Ari. We've seen it so many times. Then being able to, to bring Viego in and then just reset city for both of them. You have the ice zombies going all over. Viego to get off all of uh, his ults c uh, continuously. Now going to look to where V5 want to finish off their draft with. You would expect them to maybe look towards uh, a top lane now, just answer up against the Gwen. We still have things like the GP open, which were obviously one of like the longtime answers to the Gwen, and Rich uh, had an insane performance on it the other day. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, it can be very terrifying. And, you know, we'll see where Rich is going to go with that top side. Because, you know, after game number one, I feel like he's just looking to finish this series out as the dominant top laner. Having counter pick in both games now as well, like Rich is set up for success here. And we've seen that Cars are more than happy uh, to focus on his lanes. But perhaps just going tanks. Maybe this is the answer for V5. Just always have a tank up at the top side nowadays. I'm curious to see how they'll go with that one. I, I feel like their damage could be a little bit lacking if they okay. do, and they instead pivot to this. This was obviously one of the first things we saw pivoting into the Gwen when we came into Summer, rather than the GP. So you should be able to scale and lane just fine. Uh, Shallow, who shouldn't be able to dominate Rich like Rich was able to dominate him uh, when he was on the Kale himself. So I like that they're bringing more damage. I like that they're bringing, again, a bit more kite back potential and a huge carry. Now for FPX, hovering over the Jinx to try and match the range that Ezreal brings with her rockets. And now when it comes to Hung, I mean, engage support is what we highlighted coming through. Nautilus still being left open. Tom Kench? Tom Kench kind of fits the mold right again now that your W is the Abyssal Dive being able to start things off. Thresh. If he locks in the Thresh, it'll be so good. It's such a good pick for specifically Hung. Uh, but also, we saw the Lucian and Senna both being banned away. We'd have the whole trio if he locks in the Thresh. Uh, but Hung, just such a good Thresh player. It's so great alongside the Jinx. We've barely seen Thresh recently. It feels like he completely fell out of the better. But I feel like for Hung specifically, it's such a great pick. I feel like the durability update really hurt him. Uh, again, just no armor per level. They change how, how like much you get for your missiles in. And again, just the fact that you are a champion looking for a hook, looking to set up for burst, when burst has just been nerfed by the fact that people have more health and more resistance is able to come through. So now for V5, this would be a bit of a standard answer to come through if you do hook the Thresh, you know, just being more innately tanky in the early game to try to pull things off. But I don't expect too much action in the bot lane once again. This looks like it should be a very mid-jungle oriented game. Yes, it should. And we'll see who's going to win it out. But I I'm liking the Lee Sin Ari. This is like every time we've seen FPX being this proactive, aggressive team, it's pretty much been these two picks, right? And you mentioned it before. Care coming into the league, very much a an Ari aficionado. This is a guy that's played a ton of Ari. It was easily his most played when he joined the LPL. So definitely a comfort pick for him. And Clid, we all know how good Clid is on the Lee Sin. Uh, so fantastic little duo. And perhaps we get that Thresh roaming around from Hung to help out, turn it into that three-man squad that we've been talking about so much. Yeah, because I feel like attacking jungle could really be the way to go with this game. Uh, top lane might be a little bit hard for either side. You expect Kale to be under turret early on, so no avenues there for FPX. And Gwen just very very much a nuisance to try to layer down with, with the lack of CC that uh, V5 have in their top side. Same thing when you look at bot lane, right? Jinx versus Ezreal could be kind of hard to find an opportunity, but you can still look for them. So it feels like the play might just be unlocking supports from lane, linking up with mid, and then working your way to stealing Raptors and not allowing Clid to get any this game. You know, taking away enemy buffs and just hardcore winning this game through abusing the enemy jungler and then pseudo turning the game into a bit of a 5v4. Yeah, I mean, why not just do the same thing that did in game number one, basically, right? Just deny Raptors over and over, or at least blue side denying Raptors. It was more v5 doing it last time around. 
We'll have to wait and see. I'm excited for how this one pans out. I'm also excited to see Rich up in this top lane, now taking the pick that Xiao Lao who played in game number one and using it against him. But look at this straight off of the bat from V5, looking to get a little bit cheeky with it as Rich pretends he's alone up in the top side. They've spotted Xiao Lao Hu and the rest of V5 going to go quite deep. If Xiaolaihu pass upwards, he could be in trouble. But look at this, playing with vision. V5, trying to bait it. Rich wanted Xiaolaihu to go for the 1v1. But moved in a little too early, I fear. Yeah, not able to find it. They tried to pincer him from both sides to be able to lock him down. Not able to do so. Now FPX is going to respond and get a bit of a ward for themselves onto the enemy red buff. Uh, in terms of, like, starts that we see, nothing too out of the ordinary. Kale has taken, uh, Ghost in this matchup against the Gwen. The lane isn't too egregious. You can just play more for team fights in terms of having that one being able to move around later on. Same with Shalahu, not opting for the Ignite, playing more for the 5v5 with the Ghost himself. Yeah. I don't think FBX actually saw the V5 players there. I'm pretty sure everyone else stayed in the brush, and, uh, it was only Rich that was actually spotted. He moved forward and Shalahu back to I'm not 100% sure on that one, but I believe. Either way, Ward coming down onto that red buff. So it will be uh, Clid playing with full information on this one of Casa. As Casa starts on the chickens, obviously not been spotted just yet, but he inevitably will go for that red buff next. Heavy trades up at the top side to start this one off, though. Yeah, Rich having you know an advantage with the fact that he can just use that E, whittle down from a range. Still could be rough on see Shalahu getting the, the stacks for his Q to be able to win out with the snip. So Rich going to have to be very careful to make sure he doesn't end up on the losing end of a trade. And we already hit on for Karsa, right? Shouldn't find too many opportunities in the top side. So we'll be pathing down towards his Nautilus and his Lissandra. That's where we'll, we'll really want to see V5 get ahead. But my God, Rich these guys don't see stop. It all in. Rich they is going stop. forwards right now. What are you doing, Rich? Uh, he was... Did he think he was blue side? I just can't even much. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. The level one I get, again, you have the range from your E. You're not walking up to the wave yet, but now you're contesting him in the wave. He's just stacking up cues right in front of your face. You don't care at all. I, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Rich has had a fantastic game one. What? What? Maybe... Maybe he thought he still had the XP advantage he had in game number one. I, I don't know. I genuinely... He's in Sijuani mode. That's what's just happened right there. He was in Sijuani mode, but he's playing Kale. Look at this. Like, he starts the trade on less HP. He's on less I mean, HP, and he's going forwards. I mean, again, other than the very first trade, he was losing out on every subsequent trade. He hits level two first, but Chalahu hits level two pretty much exactly at the same time. And now we see FPX. Okay, just clearing out a ward. Thought maybe they're going to try and look to punish. But you're right. Not being able to tether and, and stay on the outside of the range from the snip coming on through. Didn't help with the fact that he was up. All in on the bottom oh, side. Flash forward. Oh, see you later, hung. That's why you don't play Thresh anymore, I guess. Because he's about as thick as a sheet of paper. Just gets annihilated. And this goes complete opposite of how these two bot lanes look coming in, right? FPX for the bot lane who are looking for the aggressive 2v2s, finding kills to our V5, have been playing a lot more passive, able to find it coming out from PP God. And V5 might be having some trouble in Paradise in the top side, but at least having this bot lane that they can rely on in game two. And this is not typically what you think of when you get an Ezreal locked in, right? You don't think of aggressive lanes, you don't think of kill threat, but here in the LPL, Ezreal, different kind of champion you can be aggressive if you can land the poke down and if pp god can find those kinds of hooks just flash forward for the root as well you'll find those kills photic with a big advantage now in the bottom side and a 10 cs lead to boot yeah and we can see for v5 having the advantage in bot lane they're consistently going to be able to keep prio in mid especially now that dream has matched the back of care should just be able to push that one in quite easily and get up those electrocute procs care even going towards the uns unsealed spell book so showing kind of acknowledging he isn't gonna be able to win out in this lane and playing more for the utility he can bring on later so it will bring a lot of options for karsa who for now is just <laughs> playing for that level six nice oh. nice from pp god to buffer the q i love that pp god as well literally just standing there like go on hung hook him try just give it your best shot here and just uh immediately buffers it like you say very nicely done there completely retung like a book and you can see Clint was trying to make a play on the bottom side. It will be denied. Yeah, and now I, I like the V5. Carson once again passing down towards his bottom side. When we've hit on for FPX, it's been a lot about stacking up these early Drakes. 
Clid knowing he can't just go for that one. Finds Dream. Yeah, Dream will just no, pop away, though. Okay, I feel like you could have gone for the uh, Charm Flash there. I feel like that was an opportunity that uh, Kerr didn't quite go for. Didn't want to use his Flash, I guess. Uh, but now Karsa moving into the mid lane instead. And it will be Kerr there. But level 6 available on this Ari. Dream goes forward. Uses that ulti. The chain stun. Spirit Rush Flash comes out. And Kerr will be safe. Yeah, V5 a lot more decisive about looking for that gank. Uh, then Care was like you were highlighting. Still ends up being a flash for flash trade in mid, but you force Care to recall to her dream. Still doing fine in terms of health. Is low on mana, so you'd expect him to maybe look for a recall after getting this wave pushed in. And now FPX. Clid probably going to look for the steal. You do have the lantern from Hung available if he does just want to try and get in, get the smite, and then be able to get out. Yeah, Clid is just going to walk into dream who was shopping maybe. I'm not sure. Didn't seem to notice Clid walking straight up to him. But ultimately, Clint in the mid lane will just decide the Drake isn't going to go his way. Carsa will take that one and return to his jungle. In the meantime, Clint can perhaps move up and at least get the top side of the And we can see, right, walking through mid, leaning with his mid laner, maybe looking to steal a bit of a, a bit of a cheeky chicken camp himself. And Rich playing near his tower. That's why we highlighted that it could be hard for either side jungler to look to play towards this top half of the map, especially now that Rich is showing some respect. Bit of aggression again. Oh, oh, oh PP God. I like the attempt there, trying to get him out of the lantern, but denied in the end. Ward cleared by FBX on the top side. Rich is level six on the Kale on full HP, though. I don't think that's a dive that you want to try and make happen. No, I, I like that they back off. Just going to start preparing for this Rift Herald that's going to come up in about one minute's time. V5 still have time to get the setup for it, right? We saw True Shot Barrage just come out from the bot lane. They're going to have push if they want to start rotating up to look for this. Hook on oh, wow. WX's health bar already gone here. Couple more autos would do the trick. Hung body blocking. But Fotix level six. He's already used his ultimate, actually. He must have used that just to clear the wave yes. at some point. So he used it like about 20 seconds ago. It looked like they were trying to guarantee themselves pressure to take a plate and maybe rotate towards top. But after fighting that advantageous trade, I wouldn't be surprised if we see V5 just pivot down towards the spot side and get a whole ton of plates on a Fotix. Oh, Shella, who low on HP. Rich, doing well in this matchup. You know, down in CS, but at least finding some kind of reprieve as he gets a couple of good trades there. Might be able to deny that recall as well. Waits until the last second to do so. Shala, who knowing what was going to happen there. But Rich, just going to be looking to freeze that, that wave as much as he can because he's way behind in CS. And obviously, the early death was Ooh. tragic, to say the least. Can't Rich was even chasing him. Rich was even chasing him out. If you look at the minimap, he's actually still oh hunting God. for him. Wants to deny that recall at all costs, but won't happen. Shalo, who has TP available, will just drop that straight away on towards the top side. Rich can do the exact same and match him. Yeah, so huge CS advantage up in top side for the side of FPX, but huge CS advantage 4v5 down in bot. They're able to get that wave in. Again, I think they enabled their bot lane more because of that huge trade, and now we can start to see uh, members like PP God making their way to mid and maybe setting up for that Herald where FPX are actually pinging already. Yeah, and Rich actually opting into uh, not recalling before to make sure he could keep the wave there, but realizing he's not going to be able to keep going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shaolahu, so now has to recall that should buy space for FPX to just go for this Herald. You can see Dream nowhere near the situation either. True Shot Barrage is optimistic, but you know, you gotta make the attempt. The, the miracle play can't happen without the attempt, right? So this Ooh. will be hopefully the Herald for FPX. Cast a toy with the idea, but won't go over. Yeah, and feels like if V5 wanted to guarantee this objective, when you had chunked out the bot lane so heavily is when you probably should have just rotated your bot lane over and looked for that play. LWX would have had to recall anyway, so wouldn't have been able to push in and trade for any plates on the opposite side. V5 trying to get everything on the map that they can. Gave FPX the window to find that Herald, but still going to be able to all in on both sides of the map. Uh, Rich is actually winning this time around, though, and still has his ultimate available. Big damage on Shala, who low on HP. But oh. here comes Glenn to turn the play around and cast a suddenly 2v1. Wants to go Shala, who but won't get the chance. Nice bait coming out from Shala, who I'm, I don't think it was intended to be a bait, but that's how it worked out in the end, forcing Rich to over chase because Shala, who got so low, able to finish that one off and at least get a bit of a reprieve in the top side. And now mid laners kind of being in a neutral place, 
it, it feels like both teams gonna should be looking to opt to maybe trade for opposite sides, right? For FPX, you do have Herald, so you gotta be a bit cautious of top lane if that's where Clid is playing towards with this, but my god, Clid's taking a ton of damage. Oh, Kaz is gonna go for the dive! We've got jungle as Kaz playing as top laners oh. today. As Kaza now Lee Sin coincidentally is best champion and he uses it to hop away on the minion wave. And it's Clint just not be... expecting it at all. Not expecting it whatsoever. He had flash, he, he had everything available to be able to get away, but not even thinking it'd come through is, sorry to interrupt, we're gonna get the replay coming on through. Doesn't have full snacks of his snip, actually misses another hit of his ult to come through, which is what allows for Rich to be able to turn the trade. But Clint getting here right in the nick of time to connect with the Sonic Wave, guaranteeing that Rich goes down. Yeah, Rich trying to play. He thought that he had the numbers advantage with Casa there. Little did he know Clint was on the way. But then Kasa makes up for his top laner's mistake with a solo dive in the top side. <laughs> I was, you know, I was about to say how they were, you know, pretending to be top laners. I didn't anticipate that that would mean immediately Kasa dives, but realistically, that's the way top lane works in LPL. Yeah, and again, Klid just not reading that damage to come through, had all the tools to escape, is sadly Botic not able to cancel the recall coming out from LWX, but V5 will get uh, Fodic to bot lane first. You're now overloading mid to make yeah. sure you have some pressure and with Clid showing top, this should set up a Drake for the side of E5, but FPX might be able to uh, get a pretty bit of plates on this top lane turret broken down. Fotic doing the hit a single target with True Shot Barrage challenge brackets impossible so far this game. Is, uh, <laughs> they're just sailing across the map. As uh, Shallow who will find pressure in the top side to push things in. A tower plate taken by Photic on the bottom side. This will be at least a couple of plates. They go for the dive. Clid has the Q onto Rich. There's the damage, but will trade his own life. Dream gets the Everfrost. That's so huge. There's no tower oh, damage going oh. down. Shallow who why did you oh, Dream! It? Shallow who you fool! <laughs> oh, it's still got super more action. FBX. Hung might go side. down. Yeah, Hung's knocked up, taken. Huge chunk of damage there. Photic should be able to follow with the E and Kasa is heading him off. Hung desperate to survive, but it ain't happening. It's a good cute. Like, fair play to Hung. He's dodging, he's ducking, he's dipping, he's diving, and Kasa puts an end to the nonsense. Yeah, I like it. Looked like Photic was maybe thinking at first, I'm just going to flash over the swan, kill him. Sees and probably hears from Kasa, hey, I'm wrapping around. Doesn't need to commit that ability. And does go down in the end. Hung did waste a fair bit of time, but still, V5 spot lane, going to be able to pick up a Probably another plate on top of this. Still a minute up before plates go down. And I mean, huge just picks for V5 so far in this early yeah. mid game. Already a 2k gold lead. And look at the timing on the Herald. Clint immediately has to go back up top. LWX, super low on HP. Botic does lose a lot of his own HP in that trade though. And LWX with Rocket available. Now the Herald will finally go down in this top side. That's two plates taken. Rich desperately trying to defend up here. We will finish that Herald off, we'll dodge the Sonic Wave, and we'll just clear this wave. Yeah, so nothing too bad as V5 are still hammering home on this turret down in the bot side. And LWX, who had just come back to lane, already being forced to recall once again. FPX might need to commit care down here, but Dream has a wave going into turret in mid. And I mean, there's just so much pressure going in on this bot side that Dream being unlocked to, to find his own plates in mid. And that's all off the back of these heavy traits. And we were coming into the series Talking about how LWX and Hung, great in the 2v2, have been doing well in that 2v2, have been finding 2v2 kills against bot lanes like Viper and Mako. And yet, today, getting absolutely destroyed. And we're going to get to see a replay here. Clid going in with the kick to lock him down. Has enough durability, didn't even have the ultimate up, but still comes in, does lock him down. Damage comes through, and looks like hitting him didn't even matter. The wave had actually just completely cleared out before... Uh, aggro had swapped over, but still, a uh, dream. Really oh, no. great TP to punish. Imagine playing AD carry in 2022 Omega Lull. Uh, just gets absolutely one shot. Cleanse does nothing against Lissandra because there's just too much CC. You know, I feel like the whole like playing AD carry Omega Lull thing is like almost factually true just about every year, right? Uh, and heck, yeah. this is like one of the best times to play AD carry with I the know, durability update coming through, but... I, it's Rough. not necessarily that I agree with it. It's more just that it's funny. But it's just a say, funny meme. <laughs> it is the nature of the role as well, right? The, yes. the whole point is that you are glass cannon. That is literally what it says on the tin. So I feel like if you're upset that you're dying to a fed Lissandra, well, uh, you need to play a different role. 
Yeah, and you should also question why there is a Fed Lissandra. It's <laughs> <So> V5. <laughs> V5, you trying true. to trying to make because, something cheeky happen? Because Shallow, who and Clint tried to dive a tower while the TP was available. That's why. And now Dream has three kills. And this is the second game in a row as well. The Dream managing to find himself a huge advantage. Hung, going to go for an attempted hook. That was blind, by the way. Had no idea PP God. Uh, well, actually, yeah. How did he know PP God was there? I'm not sure. I didn't see where PP God passed in from. FPX obviously have a ward that looks like right on the outskirts of Herald, but I don't think PP God crossed there. Maybe crossed through that one above pit and Hung just making the guess that he should be in that brush. But V5, uh, gonna use this opportunity to take the Herald. I don't think FPX are in a position to contest it. No! LWX! Oh, no. We've all been. Oh, we've no! All been... Oh, he Please. backs off. Come on, Dream. Surely you go for those. I think wanting to. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. he's gonna find it. He's gonna find it. He's gonna find it. Side. LWX. Flash available. Oh, <laughs> no. There is no flash. There is no flash. Dream just walks up to him, flashes forward, and finishes him off. Carson now in a 2v1 on the top side, but Rich ults him over the wall. Carsa will be safe to try and escape or try and go forwards oh. onto Hung. Carsa way too aggressive on that one. Photix here, though, alongside Rich. I don't think they have the damage to finish these ones off. But then again, Photix pretty big. The two solo laners being chased down, and Photix will finish them off. It's beautiful from V5. The mojo is flowing as Photix gets a triple. Rich just dancing around them, not able to land anything. We see Fotic able to weave in on the opposite side. And overall, Garsa maybe a little bit greedy with that ultimate trying to jump onto Hung, but V5 are able to capitalize and even respawning in time for the Drake that's just about to come up. I feel like that play was so reminiscent of the mid lane dive that we saw in game number one, right? Where Karsa is a bit too greedy with it, trying to finish off Hung. And it was Hung again, the target. This time around, though, it's Votic there to clean things up. And they managed to make the play work. Now a third Drake as well for V5. Everything they could want is going their way. A 6,000 gold lead. They're the only team to have taken a tower, although that may change shortly. Let's take another look. Is Karsa just so aggressive on the play? Yeah, already having a kill from the fact that he was uh, possessing the Lee Sin. Follows up on Hung. Conqueror gets stacked, but still now you're in between multiple members, not able to jump in. Still goes for it. Tries to get onto Hung, but Hung did have flash, and he manages to get away. And then, oh, wait, oh what are we God. jumping into? It never ends. Clint going forward, trying to finish him the flash. Oh, he didn't get the auto in time, and it's a double for Floating again. 5-0 oh, and 3 as Hung is annihilated by Dream, and Karsa will not let anyone escape. Actually flashes forward just to remind LWX that his champion is useless. And V5 are just completely demolishing them. I know he came in the day and I said, FPX, please beat V5. They have been completely sus, but V5 have looked looking so much better. Oh. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> what? I honestly did not think he had eno enough damage to burst him out. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> this is the worst top lane I've ever seen. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore. I don't uh, let's care. Look at <laughs> let's look at me. Care going in. Both, sadly, Everfrost and Charm both misses. Great hook by Peepy got to ensure that they miss as well. And then, oh, we see Karsa possessing the Ori to make sure the charm comes out. And I think that bought enough damage and enough time for Fotic to be able to get the damage off once the flash comes through from the Lee Sin for the, them to be able to take the fight. And overall, just huge hero plays coming out from both PP God and Karsa in that exchange. Yeah, incredible stuff. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard to pivot back to being serious <laughs> after that. It really is. I've got the giggles now. I actually, I'm crying with laughter after that top lane play. That was something to behold, honestly. But just look at the scoreboard for V5, man. This is just absolute domination from them. And it's good to see that they can have solid early games, right? We were criticizing V5, saying that their early games have been really, really weak. And they've just been winning in the mid game. Well, not in this series. They've looked good. <laughs> Aside from... Rich up in the top side, not having the best game of his life. But, you know, MVP in game number one. So swings and roundabouts, I suppose. Uh, but V5 looking a lot better across the board today. Yeah, and a lot of it stemming, I, I think, from Karsa this game as well. Again, Karsa had an atrocious first series. Like, literally one of the worst games ever when he played the Poppy against Kiki. But 
coming in here on this Viego looking much better. And I do got to say, right, I feel like Carsa does bring like things we don't see, like communication and tangibles, because he's one of the players where I, I've talked to a lot of players who have worked with him, and he's someone who everyone loves working with Carsa. People love having him on their team as a uh, V5 going to try wow. and find Clid. Oh, good Lancet from Hung, actually. Clid dodges the true shot barrage there. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. And Carsa, renowned for being an extremely vocal player as well, right? We know this guy is a shot caller. We know this guy is going to happily lead the charge on plays. And we've seen multiple times in this series alone that he will go for plays, even if they're not necessarily the best play. And it's down to you as his teammate to follow up on that. Yes, he's what we, we've talked about this a lot off of camera, but he's one of those players that you say to your teammates, hey, I'm going to do this. You either come in and we make it work, or I'm going to go in and run it down. Ball's in your court, boys. And you know, yeah. as a team, you, you have a choice to make. I see those are my favorite kinds of players because Doom B is the same. Doom B is one of those kinds of players where he is going to make the play, whether you like it or not. You need to be on board or it's your fault that you're losing the game because the play can work. They believe that it can work because of their hand stiff we were talking about before. Look at the players well, on the speed that's seriously, roster. That's seriously just old top esports, right? That's every player saying that to each other. Every player turning around saying, I'm going in, you follow me or we lose. And you just need to hope they go in the same place. Knight and Jackie love 2v5ing at the Baron against JDG, remember? That is the ultimate, like, look, we're, we're going for this one. This is happening. Everyone else just got to be on board with it. Uh, it's, I, I absolutely adore. That's, right, that right there, that's Mojo. That's if Mojo. You need a definition that's of Mojo. Mojo. That's Mojo right there. Uh, Casa always going to be bringing that to the table. Rookie, a similar player. Shallow, who though, wanting Rich on the top side. Care is here too. Dodges away from the charm, uses his ulti. It's going to be okay on this one now, trying to turn it around as Dream arrives, but I don't think they can go for a dive. In the meantime, pressure in the mid lane. Feels like V5 struggling to actually exert too much pressure on the map, but it's okay no. because the Drake coming up in five seconds, and that'll be solved. Yeah, I feel like V5 weren't trying to over-aggress because of how soon the Drake was coming up. If not, right, they could have been trying to, like, fish for picks in topside, like, threatening the idea of a Baron against FPX, and FPX would definitely happily go check. Uh, but V5 taking it slow, going to guarantee themselves soul, and Botic maybe even able to take down this turret. He does. So overall, huge objectives going for V5. Dream picking up a turret down in bot. And we're at, we're at almost a 10k gold lead. With yeah. Soul now going to be picked up for V5. Game number one, a lot closer. 30 minutes long. Uh, game number two, we're 22 minutes in. And the gold lead is bigger than it ever got in game number one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so definitely a tough situation for FPX. And LWX especially having a really rough series. Like struggling in the lane in game number one. Now game number two, you know, falling behind early in the jinx is never going to be a fun situation. But... 0 3 zero, and just getting pummeled in every fight. Yeah, we haven't seen their bot lane able to come online. And again, FPX's bot lane typically is, in my mind, they are like the coin flip bot lane. They are the push for aggression. You find the kill and carry or you don't, but really just being very quiet in this series so far. Uh, on the flip side, though, V5 being extremely proactive, right? We've seen many times them kind of disrespecting uh, what the enemy's able to do in terms of where they're putting pressure on the map. We find the hook. Got a jump. And that's all they find. Which is going to be okay on this one as Carson. Oh, no, they're fighting PP God. PP God's here as well. This is the play for V5, but Hung with a great flash. Skill shots go wide, though, is Care in trouble. LWX kicked in and hooked back. It's beautiful. In fact, it's voting down LWX. Wrong AD carry, but either way, he goes down. And now FBX with a potential opportunity, but in goes Carson. 1v5. He has no regrets. And now the resets. The charm comes on in. Hung goes down, and Carson ults out. It's a straight up hands dip once more. Luckily, Carsa able to save that fight after PB got aggressively eating forward. Oh, they still want to keep going. Ooh, Dream okay. wanted to okay. get the risk. He was a millimeter away from the Ring of Frost there. That would have been devastating if LWX goes down or something. LWX did have cleanse though, so I think he maybe would have been okay. Either way though, potential opportunity on Baron here, but it looks like it will just be resets for V5. Yeah, with resets coming out, 
We will jump right into the replay. V5 wanting to find this one, sending PP God in, in but Hong with a really nice flash to dodge out. Then Bodic so aggressive with this, actually didn't even E in, just channeling his true shot barrage, giving Clid the opportunity straight into Hung's hook. It pretty much guarantees that he will go down. Rich's ultimate buys him a little bit of time. We see here Dream as well, actually able to do a huge chunk of damage, which Karsa then follows up on to guarantee he gets the possession of the Ari. Charm follows through, and Karsa able to make sure V5 picks up two kills off of the back of Fotik getting caught out. Blue buff resetting here as V5 starting to exude pressure on the top side here, as you said before, using that Baron to try and fish for picks. FX moving in here. Blue buff going to be given over to LWX, so he has health regen and mana regen now uh, with the double buffs available to him. And getting towards the point where he'll start to exist as a champion. Has a pickaxe getting towards that third item, but just look how far behind Botic he is. Botic already on three and a half. Yeah, I mean, just huge right now. And V5, complete control of vision. We see them. They're just going to get this. I don't think Click can even get here in time to hope to contest. No, we have to pivot to mid. And now V5 can just start pushing down these waves. We see them sending Dream to top. They can group up mid, do the two lane collapse, and start getting some of this damage down in what will surely be a V5 win, right? We're 11k gold up. They have soul. This one is as over as it comes. Yeah. FPX, prove me wrong. I'm hoping that that catches on, though. Do the two-lane collapse. It's kind of like one of those dance moves from the 90s uh, where you have, to, you have to do the two-lane collapse. Kicked in, and Rich explodes on top of Care. Low HP, LWX over the wall here. We'll be able to survive four now, but might be in trouble in the short term here as he's slowly but surely chased down V5. I mean, it's just a gold dip. I tried to curse it much. I tried point. to curse it. You tried your best, but Votic will be able to just charge on forwards here. Should be able to finish the kill off. Oh, tails of it. Whoa, my God. Where did his health go? It's a solo kill, technically. This PP gun takes up the tower. And Fotic gets yet another one. That's V5 finishing this series strong. Looking fantastic. And Fotic ain't stopping anytime soon. Care the next target who's forced back onto the fans. Yeah, V5 just coming out with a huge performance today. By far the best performance we have seen from this roster. Dream stepping up. Bodic and PP God looking much better in this series. And Karsa even having a solid day. PP God sacrificing himself to keep Bodic alive at the end there. You love to see it from the duo in the bottom lane. And V5 across the board looking fantastic. Having a really, really great performance and showing that they can uh be consistent you know that was kind of the big criticism is that a lot of the games had pretty weird early games it wasn't a consistent style every single game right we weren't seeing a, a consistent theme this series it felt like okay now they're taking it serious now they're all on the same page and dream as well like replacing rookie is a tough feat but he's looking good yeah dream uh, dream looking better i think each series right and the tt series looking kind of horrible moving into lgd looking a little bit here or there some good games some bad and then overall today i think dream just looks solid able to set up a lot of these kills completely bullying lwx in that second game felt bad to be the jinx in that game and i mean this game specifically i felt like it was a lot of b5's like four man squad on the bottom side working really well together rich just soaking up pressure in top and then kind of mid jungle into bot karsa making sure that the bot lane can do what they want constantly invading into the enemy red buff once again a lot of clid's chickens getting taken away yep. every jungler raising their fist angrily at the thought and yeah, again just v5 most solid performance so far fpx so weird like you have serious like RNG and EDG where they're playing well and they just scrape by with close losses and then you have series like IG and then today against V5 where they just get completely murked against teams who yeah. they should have had a fair shot against and the thing is like one of the things I've heard said about FPX is that they play to the level of their opponents but that was not the case today that was absolutely no. not the case and especially the bottom lane like the bottom lane from FPX really weird mistakes today i was hoping they would look a lot better in the 2v2 and conversely v5 playing way more aggressive in that 2v2 than what we've seen so far this split you know historically i would have said they were an aggressive 2v2 like the start of spring it felt like they were aggressive they sort of mellowed out across the course of the year um starting starting the split they're looking aggressive again yeah, I feel like PP God is someone who likes to look for opportunities. Like PP God was always the player who just likes to go in. That was one of the things that worked so well for V5 back on the 2020 iteration of the roster, right? PP God and Sam D going to go in. You know Mole and Weiwei are always going to be not too far behind. 
but it definitely feels like Fotic kind of toning down the lane a bit. Like they can still look for aggression. There's still two v twos here and there, but definitely not one of not a Viper Mako or not a Hong LWX who are always going to be fishing for it. So nice to see again that that aggressive style still able to come out from B five and then to show hey we can either carry through top or we can carry through bot. We're very versatile in terms of where the pressure can come from. Fotic definitely put the damage out. I have to say. That first kill they got on Hunt, I was amazed at how much damage Fotic was able to, to chuck out on the Ezreal in the early game. But kind of proving that if you can land your abilities, if you land in those Qs, Ezreal is strong at every single point in the game. It's just often hard to land those Qs. Fotic, not really struggling with that aspect. No, and, uh, you know, Fotic overall, I think he's, he's an interesting player because he's someone who obviously was just like, didn't come in very good when he came on the top of Esports, was slightly improving, got subbed out. Felt like coming in in spring, he was all right. I think really solid in team fights, but he just is on a team where it's easy to function as an AD carry. And it still feels like Fotik is a player who we're still seeing improve and can still see a lot of improvement going forward. Yeah, I remember there was a, there was an interview with someone recently. I forget which player it was, uh, but they were asked uh, what their advice would be for people that want to get better at Ezreal. <laughs> The, ad the advice was hit cues, which is the ultimate, like, you know, classic r slash career advice. Fotic definitely taking that, that advice in this one. Carsa having a fantastic series as well. I feel like Carsa, I mean, week one Carsa versus Carsa today, 